Aha. Right. Let's get into this thing. That was loud. Right. First of all, I like to take the bases off these. Because the bases being off makes it easier to take the bell off the back. Because uh, it's easy to scrape the paint of the bell by taking it off first. Oop. So, keep the screws at hand. Put them in a bowl. Nice little uh, locator lug on there. Right. So you might think, oh, let's get the bezel off. Not yet. Do not do that yet. Instead, undo the winder by unscrewing it in the direction opposite to the arrow. Press in the button. Uh, and, oh, it would help if you undo the screws, wouldn't it? Undo the screws. One, two, three. Press in the button and take the bell off. Pretty simple so far. Here is the inside of the bell, which is kind of rusty, but it is a bell. And bells tend to be. If you do get that reference, then you're probably getting it wrong. All right, uh, let's. Okay, this is the part that we don't like to do. Uh, get the screwdriver. It needs to be quite a sturdy one, so do not make a get, don't get a, a spaghetti or piece of something like that. Uh, you want to you see this clip in here? You see this metal spring? This is an annoying thing. So the idea is you push down on the ends of the spring like that, and try and get the the very tips of it to come out of the bezel so they're no longer stuck under there you have to push them down and hook them out so push it down because I didn't do it right the first time push it down and hook it out just like that now we have both ends of the spring on the outside and we can take it out now from the top first we can squeeze the bezel on the ends and Unhook, unhook it. Careful with the lens. The bezel is off. The signature oval, be oval bezel. Now we have a uh, relatively boring looking clock. So there's the uh, plastic lens, which is quite sturdy, but don't be too forceful with it. Alright, now for the hands. So the hands are the next thing to come off. And you will notice that this whole movement inside has not been revealed yet because it's got this uh, famous Westcox dust proof shroud. The movement goes in here and it helps keep the dust out because even with the outside case off, dust can still get in. So, even though I know these hands will just pull off with my fingers, I'm going to be extra careful in case yours do not do that. So, get a piece of protecting something and carefully. Get that there hand off the end uh, by pulling, pushing it off and levering it off and whatever. The other hand, same exact story, even though you can just use your fingers for this one. Helps to have nails, really. Same with the last hand, helps to have nails. Now the dial should either just lift off or it'll be held in with these tabs which have been bent over so unbend the tabs so they're they're flat and the dial should just come off it's a uh, piece of paper or card glued to this metal pan dial pan we call it Let's put that aside and now we have exposed the movement so you can look for the date code now uh, I can see that this one is 1066, I was right. 1066, that's the Battle of Hastings, isn't it? And you can see that through this tiny hole here, which is not very helpful. So I'll uh, 
And if you don't have a, a lighting or good eyesight like myself, I will show you where to find it later on. This here on the side is the setting for the uh, loud and soft for the alarm. Sometimes this can be a bit loose, and this one is borderline loose. However, it still seems to function because it stays either end if it needs to. So, next up is to remove these four uh, bolts, nuts, whatever they are. Uh, this one has four. I think some of the later ones only have three. So uh, it's worth, well, not really worth noting that. It's not important. Let's get a socket. And I, it seems like a... 5.5 millimeter socket which also fits the bolts on the back of a or nuts on the back of a smith's alarm clock also fit this luckily the rubber grommets have not perished so uh, this thing is still held in nice and softly into the into the case sometimes the rubber grommets have perished uh, and that's a bit unfortunate because it means they get everywhere and the clock tends to rattle around Right, I dropped one of those, so let's let quickly, quickly find it. Now, I, I believe some of these actually have washers under here, but for some reason this one doesn't. Either they've got missing or it never had them. I'm going to go with the second option because there were literally none in here, not like just one or two. So I'm assuming that we don't need them. So let's, uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, no, lost it. Uh, I can't remember the word. Oh well. No, that's really annoying me. What the that word is? Uh, what's the word where you do something without wanting to do it? You just do it because you have to. And you think it's best, but even though you don't actually want to do it. I think it begins with N. And it's, in, it's an adverb. Uh, I really can't think of it. That's odd. Okay, okay. I, I, I say that word a fair, fair amount, so I don't know. How how bizarre. Okay, let's proceed. So you might think, oh, this thing here is stopping me from taking the movement out of here. Well, first of all, check it's not the hammer. In this case, it is not the hammer. Because sometimes that can be sticking out. So, what you want to do is you can either just push it straight through or you can be extra careful and try to uh, shimmy this whatever this thing is off the ends of these uh, knobs. I actually think it's safer to the to the material to just push it through because you're not levering it and getting it in all weird angles. So we'll do that. I'll just push it through like this. Although it doesn't want to come out for some reason. Am I missing? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not missing anything. Okay, I just pushed it through, and this helps keep it dustproof. As you can see, it did chew up the uh, material a little bit, but it's better than ripping it because oftentimes these have. I think these are kind of a uh, a rubbery rubber. It looks like fabric, but it's actually rubber, and uh, they tend to split. And once they split, you can't really stick them back together. Well, you can with glue, but it's not easy. And oftentimes it's not really worth doing. Now you can remove these rubber grommets now if they're perished, but luckily these ones are just fine, so I'm going to keep them as they are. The button will fall out probably. Uh, it looks like this. If it has slots in it, then it's a later one, uh, which you can actually remove from the outside of the clock by pulling on it. But this is an earlier one, which does not have a externally removable button. It's just a solid piece of plastic. Very cool. Let's put that there. And I'm, I'm bound to forget about it. So with the movement out the case, we can take a look and see exactly why this needs work. So if you look around, you will see the movement, which is this, is constructed from these brass, two brass plates, which is like a sandwich. And inside it are all of these wheels and gears and stuff like that. Now, at the end of these wheels and gears, these are mounted on these axles. And at the ends of the axles, we have what are called pivots. And if you look, 
you will see these points like here where the pivots protrude through the plates through these holes called pivot holes and these holes keep everything aligned and provide a structure to the uh, movement now around these holes there are a lot of black residue around this one as well there's a lot of black residue in there and i think this hole might even be worn out a bit now the black residue actually contributes to the uh, it's not oil it was at one point but now it's gone black and lumpy so it's no good and in this current state it'll actually contribute to the wear it'll slow it down become sticky and if you keep it running it'll actually grind down the brass which can mean your clock will stop running after a while and may need actual surgery now this one i do not believe does need surgery or rebushing but we will continue to investigate further also here is the extra piece of metal i was talking about on the left here we have a later one and you can see these two holes are in this earlier one actually occupied by two uh screws and they attach this extra rectangular piece of metal here which is the bridge the barrel bridge and this allows you on removing it to actually remove the mainspring barrel without disturbing any of the other components which is a very nice feature for working on the clock and i might make use of it actually when working on this one now at this end here the delicate end is a balance wheel which is this fast moving wheel uh, and it is connected to this very fine a coiled spring called a hair spring or balance spring one end of it is on the wheel and the other end is actually connected to this plate here in this case by a blob of glue which looks like nail polish or like strawberry fruit lolly or something like that the uh, end pivot of it is held in with this screw so you can remove it also without uh, disturbing any other components however don't try removing the balance wheel until you've disconnected it from this glue here so uh, I will do that soon, but I will also just inspect the movement to see anything else that may pose a hazard or uh, will make disassembling not as easy as it could be. All right, now uh, with these ones, it's I don't think there is a way to let the power down out of the spring. So I'll put the alarm on. And let it ring that'll help get some of the power out the spring but there is a mechanism on here which stops the alarm unwinding too far uh, and therefore we won't fully unwind the spring so i'll be very careful with it but most of the time you should let the power down out now if you're working on a big bend you may find that there is a coil spring wrapped around this barrel you can let down the power out of those ones by pressing on the end of the coiled spring, uh, pressing it into itself. And that will sort of ease up the uh, spring and allow you to uh, disengage it. However, with these ones, you can't really do that because the ratchet is buried right in there and it's not one you can really tinker with, unfortunately. So what we're going to have to do is just get all the delicate stuff out of the way first. Now, what I'm going to do is zoom you in. I'm sure it's getting quite dry, so I'll probably end after this video, but I'll disengage the uh, glue here. I'm just going to scrape at it, and it will probably come off in a few big lumps. But it's very important not to kink the actual spring that's inside that glue because if you do that you may find that your clock may not run ever again it's unlikely uh, usually it's much less severe than that but you do not want to run the risk of that happening so it's a very fine thing to mess around with And it's often not particularly fun or easy. Now, 
to be honest, removing this hairspring is the hardest part, in my opinion, to work on of the whole clock. The rest of this movement is fairly simple if you're good at, if you have somewhat dexterous fingers. And look, we got it out there uh, just by breaking the glue up. Uh, this requires a bit of luck, to be honest, because sometimes the glue is different and it's, you know, put on in different ways per clock. And if you have one with glue that is so solidly in there, that it can be much harder to get the spring out without damaging it. However, I, I'd say it's about 95% of the time perfectly easy. So uh, I'll zoom out again. And if we take a closer look, we'll see that the tail of the spring is no longer in the uh, brass plate. And if we keep rotating the, the balance wheel this way, we will eventually be able to remove the tail of the spring through this other slot here, which is the regulator. And once you've got the tail of that tiny spring out through both of those holes, so it's no longer in that brass regulator or in that gluey hole there, then it is safe to undo this cup on here, face the movement down close to the ground and let that balance wheel fall out. I need to do it all the way. And there we go. Fell out. This is looking all right, actually. The points are still quite sharp, uh, which means that it will probably run quite well once we're done with it. That is the middle of the... Uh, Middle of the hairspring and the balance wheel. I'll stick it in there for now. Be careful with that because it can easily get tangled up. So next up, I'm going to uh, take advantage of the uh, barrel here, and because I can't let the power down, I'm just gonna. Actually, I think it's probably better to. Uh, Take the pallet out actually so i will disengage it in a slightly safer way so i'll put my socket together get a socket that's small enough for these and these corner pillar pillar nuts the brass ones here so i will slightly undo all four uh one, two, three, four, and this one needs a bit of help because I can't get the socket in there. So I'll just use some pliers. And with these slightly undone, I'll do them undo them a tiny bit more, especially these two bottom ones here. Uh, I will put my finger on this big wheel here just to hold it still. And don't put too much force on it because the pivots are quite fragile actually. And it will carefully pop up this plate here, like that, very carefully. So I'll get some tweezers. So what I'm going to try and do is remove this end piece here, the pallet, which uh, is the last tiny little piece in the train of wheels. And I will remove it from the movement. And this allows the power to run down without the balance wheel. So this can be quite tricky, but I can't think of another way to, uh, I think I'll take this nut off completely actually. I can't think of another way to do this without letting everything run loose and wild, which is obviously not the best scenario because it can uh, be quite damaging and hazardous. So uh, I'm going to try and pop it open just enough so I can take both ends of this uh, out of there. That's good. We got the top one down instead. So I will move this so the pivot is through that little hole there instead. Uh, that one will do. Uh, 
Okay, we, we're through with that one. So the trick is we're going to hold this in a position actually where it'll turn freely without touching those two pins. That will also work. And to be honest, I don't think there was much power left in the spring at all. But it's, it's good practice to uh, try not to power out the mainspring. Because if you think about it being fully wound up, when you fully wound up the spring, it's going to have enough power in it to turn this around, this centre one around, at least uh, 24 times, probably about 30. And if that one is turning around 30 times in the middle, this one is going to be many, many more than that. So to have enough power to turn this thing probably thousands and thousands and thousands of times over uh, over a day and letting all that go at once uh, is quite unsafe but now the power's out I will undo the rest of the uh, nuts And I'll just pull it enough to uh, let some of these more fragile parts fall out. If you can, there's one. Now, these movements, uh, they don't, you can't pull them out all the way because the thing that's holding them together is the knobs on the uh, the ones that you use to set the time and the alarm so with all the other parts i only managed to get one out to be honest oh and this as well i'll put them all back because i think i should probably uh, do this first so we'll get everything back in its holes before I put this bit together again. And nut it up a tiny bit. All right. So the thing now is to try and get those knobs off. And to be honest, I would have tried before opening up the plates, but I haven't worked on one of these things for a long time. So I kind of forgot what to do. All right, we've got this back together. We've got the uh, all the wheels in back into their pivot holes. Okay, yeah, sorry, my mistake. It's been such a long time since I've worked on one of these things that the... Uh, order of procedures and stuff I uh, kind of forget so it's important to make sure they are all aligned into the holes properly now because uh, if you put any pressure on the plates you can actually snap the pivots so make sure that all the parts are if there are any left in the movement of course to uh, make sure they're actually properly aligned into the holes because now I'll be uh, Attempting to remove the knobs, which is often stiff. What I will do though is take the uh, barrel out. Just to make it slightly easier.
Right. So uh, if I get some pliers like these and hook them underneath the knob, you can attempt to roll it up like this. And you may find that it is difficult. So there are lots of different methods to use to get these knobs off. The later ones, unlike this, are even more difficult actually because their knobs are pressed on tighter. So it takes more than a simple turning of pliers to get those off. But that'll be something I cover another day. And in fact, I believe I've covered it already. And you just need to lift these off. They're not threaded or anything. They're just pressed on quite tight. It really is a case of trying all the methods you know. Because sometimes some work better than others. And sometimes you find that some work better than others. Or rather others work better than some. It's kind of like a lottery. This one is unusually stiff for an early one. They're really not usually this bad. Yeah, this is uh, quite difficult actually. Right, let's try these. A lot of the times these just crack it instantly because they're quite effective with this kind of stuff. But the trick is not to pinch them like that, the trick is to use these sharp blades to sort of roll up underneath it like we were doing with the uh, pliers coming off slowly You can see how annoying this sometimes can be. This is, I must say, quite unusual for one of these early ones to be this difficult. They're slowly getting there though. Looks like we bend it a bit, but the metal is quite soft, so that's not all that rare. Okay, well, because it's we're bending it and it's obviously so stiff that then I'm going to rebend it and try out my usually last resort method which is the old crush method. Now these are pressed on. So often 
gently crushing the very end of these brass parts here like this disturbs the friction grip the uh, pressing fit on them and that makes them easier because uh, crushing them like this kind of resets the uh, tension in them well not tension but resets the uh, gripping force a little bit so let's try it now I call this the last resort method because uh, it causes cosmetic damage. Ah, there we go, we got it off. So what it does is uh, it kind of resets the force in there by just crushing the metal. And because the uh, brass is softer than the steel that it's stuck on, you don't deform the steel inside, but instead you make the brass sort of, you know, stretch out and reset itself. It's kind of a, if you think about it, it'll, it will kind of works. Now this one here is the alarm. Same story, we need to get this apart. So, the alarm ones are sometimes easier, sometimes harder. Just like lots of things. So I will try it easily first and make sure that when you're doing this kind of stuff, you're not touching the, the delicate pivots here. Make sure you're steering clear of those. And I might go straight for the, the crush on this one because uh, I don't want to bend the plates too much. So crush there, turn 90 degrees, crush there. And this does not make them hard to put them back on because uh, they're just the same to put back on again. And yeah, the crushing definitely uh, helps us in this scenario as well. So yeah, a little uh, trick up the sleeve there, got us in the end. So let's uh, undo these nuts and I need to end this video as soon as possible because my phone will want me to end it. So goodbye and thank you for watching and hopefully I can get the plates apart in under 30 seconds. Da 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 Boom, there we go, the plates are apart. So thank you for watching, and goodbye, and I'll explain how to disassemble the rest of it another time.